Greetings friends, my name is John Gabriel and this is the new Calculus channel. So today I'm going to talk about the so-called number zero. Is zero a number or isn't it a number? And do we actually need zero in mathematics? Do we need zero at all in mathematics? And so I'm going to try and answer these questions. Let's begin. Now, uh, I wrote an article on LinkedIn a long time ago, and I've managed to do a little bit of revision to it, and it's all about zero. And so in this article, I discussed the topic of zero. And by the way, before I continue, I'm in no way insinuating or saying that we should get rid of zero, because even though I know zero is not a number, it's extremely useful in communicating the idea of different numbers and it's basically uh, very good at being a placeholder but it's not really a number as we'll see shortly so a number as i've said to you many times is a name given to a measure that describes a magnitude or size and <clears throat> what you can do is you can look at this article here there is a link to it i'll place a link to everything so you don't have to worry to see what it means to measure and to look at what the operations of arithmetic are and how we measure. So first of all, zero is a nominal number. What does that mean? It means it's a number in name only. So we'll look at the four operations of arithmetic and see that, well, let's start off with addition. Okay, so addition has no effect. It doesn't matter how you add zero to a certain number. The, nothing changes on either side <clears throat> of this equation or, or, or equality, okay, nothing. <clears throat> the same is true also if you try to subtract a number from zero because all that's really happening here is that you're uh, changing the sign of that number, okay? So zero doesn't actually take any part in the operation <laughs> at all. I mean nothing needs to be done with zero in order to uh, change the sign of a number. All we need to do is consider uh, that the subtraction operator can also be a unary operator, not only a binary, but also a unary. Okay, so we have that uh, zero minus x is in effect a fake multiplication in one sense, and nothing really happens. Okay except for an inverted sign, and zero has no part in it. Then, of course, um, subtracting zero from a number, again, is obviously also a non-operation. And we can see that uh, so for both subtraction and addition, uh, zero plays no effect in the operations. Now, what about division and multiplication? So, first of all, I'd like to tell you that multiplication came after division. Multiplication is actually based and defined in terms of division, okay? So if we say p times 0 is equal to 0 times p, what that really means, okay, what that really means is that uh, in order to have pq is equal to p times q, you need both this condition and this condition. Both must be possible. So one of these will be problematic for zero, okay? And let's see why. So now, in one of the applets I've shown you a long time ago, I told you there are two, basically two approaches, geometric arithmetic or algebraic arithmetic. They're basically the same, except that algebraic arithmetic uh, uses the abstraction of the unit and doesn't care about similar triangles, okay? So it doesn't matter which particular uh, measure you take over here because in algebra uh, these measures will be the same and you'll recall that some time ago i showed you that that is true okay so you can have things like this right where you define any number and this a half is equivalent to three sixes three over six right a half is equivalent to three over six you just add these up and add these up and I've also shown you a very nice uh, video on this. It's this video here, which is called Complete Theory of Arithmetic from Similar Triangles. So I encourage you to go and look at that. 
Now, but I'm going to go back to what I wanted to tell you earlier, which is this here. You see, if you want to look at, uh, first of all, 3 times 1 is 3, okay? And 3 divided by 1 is 3. So if I divide 3 by 3, it's 1. So you can see that this always holds in terms of geometry. And it seems like it holds when I do this, because 0 divided by 1 is equal to 0 divided by 3, even though these are not proper numbers. And so this seems to work, right? But the problem is that you need both of the conditions to be true, even from this side. And from this side, you've got a problem, because you've got 0 over 0. And of course, this leads to nonsense. 1 over 1 is definitely not equal to 0 over 0, and 1 times 0 over 1 is not equal to 0, okay? So... This here is how you can do geometric uh, multiplication and division. And I'm just showing you that in algebra, it doesn't actually work with zero because both conditions need to be true. As I showed you here, both one and two, okay? So it seems, as I showed you, that if one of them would not seem very problematic, and you can almost get away by saying this, but you'd have a problem with the other side that I just showed you. In other words, if you did this, this would be the other condition, okay? So that's not possible. That's nonsense. Now, what does R over S mean? It means the measure of a particular magnitude of size using S equal parts of the unit, where R is the enumerator, all right? So to say zero over S means no equal parts of the unit can be used for measure because there is nothing to measure. Did you get that? So it seems like you're doing a measure with zero, but you're not actually. There's no measure taking place whatsoever. And of course, to say R divided by zero means that there are K equal parts of the unit such that K times zero is equal to one. Well, this is obviously absurd. Nothing times zero is equal to one, okay? Not even the the bullshit in mainstream theory about infinitesimals. There's no such thing. Since there is no such k, it follows that r over zero is also meaningless nonsense and cannot be considered a measure of any kind. So we have shown that with respect to the four basic operations, zero is a number in name only. It's not really needed at all in mathematics. Well, ask yourself this question. The Greeks found no use for it. It's not that they didn't know about it. Well, they didn't, uh, they didn't, obviously denoted as zero, but they just had no use for it because their, their mathematics was based on geometry entirely, okay? And since all other arithmetic operations are derived from the basic four, it's true that zero means no number or no measure, or simply no operation in all cases, all right? So zero's main purpose in mathematics <clears throat> is to help in communicating number and functioning as a multiplace as a multipurpose placeholder in radic systems and equations, okay? So it has been granted number status, but it's not at all required in mathematics, even though it has, it's extremely useful and it has a privileged number status. So <clears throat> zero has no common measure with any other magnitude. For this reason, even writing zero over k is nonsense because this implies by meaning of a ratio that k equal parts of the unit measure zero but zero describes no measure, therefore it cannot be called a number, all right? So um, I think that if children were taught the number concept care carefully, there wouldn't be any problems with the use of zero and its place in mathematics. And so the, the answer to the question, can you do mathematics without zero? Of course you can. Now let me show you how. Uh, well, besides the fact that the Greeks gave you the elements of Euclid in which there is the foundation of mathematics, and there's no use of zero at all. But in any case, if you would carry around a base 10 radix template, like I've shown you here, and I purposely used the Latin symbols. On this side, I haven't, but it doesn't matter. I could have used different symbols here too. I purposely used these to show you that you don't need to use zero at all, okay? This means a thousand, a hundred, tens, and units. And so, for example, to represent what we talk about as a thousand and one, we'd only need to write down two ones in the thousands and the units column. See, no use of zero anywhere. So, but we don't carry around a template. So if we just wrote one one, it could mean 11, it could mean 11 million, it could mean 
0.11. So that's where zero comes in very handy and the radix point, okay? So <clears throat> in advanced mathematics, uh, mainstream orangutans like to multiply by x minus c over x minus c, and they need this because their bogus calculus doesn't work without it. So you can read the rest of the details in this uh, article, which I'll place a link to in the detail section of the video. So to summarize, we don't need zero in mathematics at all. You can do everything without zero because zero isn't a true number. It's basically just a placeholder, both in communicating the idea of number and also in working with equations, okay, and inequalities and everything else. So it's useful, yes, but we need to remember it's not a, an actual number. Now, uh, this is all I'd like to speak about today. And I encourage you, if you're not already a subscriber, to become a subscriber and to download these videos and to make sure you uh, store these articles and everything that you see, because one day they're probably going to shut down my YouTube channel. Already, as you know, I'm not on LinkedIn, but I will place a link also to my LinkedIn articles where you can access all the articles that I've actually updated so that you can read them because they're no longer on LinkedIn. Uh, the irony now is that I'm asking LinkedIn to close my account and they haven't done it in five days. There's apparently some sort of issue closing my account, which is very strange. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation and I'd like to add one more thing. Uh, you know, the population of India is over a, over a billion and there are more than many more liars and fools in India than you can imagine. Now, by the way, I say that very cautiously because some of my best friends are Indians and they're actually very smart people. But Indians are, I found them to be invariable liars, you know, especially that idiot C.K. Raju who claims to, who makes uh, outrageous claims that calculus was discovered in India long before the West and all that bullshit that you would hear a typical Donald Trump supporter saying about Donald Trump or whatever. So in any case, what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, you have to be very careful because Indians have this new uh, nationalism where they're trying to pretend that everything came from India. In fact, even many Wikipedia entries have uh, spurious claims about Indians. Now, I'm not saying that there weren't any good mathematicians. There were some good mathematicians, but really none of this stuff was invented by Indians, okay? And uh, the fact that they came along with zero is not a big deal at all. We could have used any other symbol, symbol for zero, okay? So, uh, moreover, the radix system that we use is not from India. It's from, it was brought into uh, use by a Dutch engineer or arithmetician called Simon Steven, all right? And, and Archimedes, in fact, knew about radix systems over 2,000 years ago. So there is nothing new about radix systems. And he didn't have to use zero in his radix system because he thought of it as we think of it in the proper mathematical sense, i.e. a placeholder system, okay? So I hope I've cleared that up and I'll leave you with those thoughts. My name is John Gable, and this is a new calculus channel. Hopefully, I'll have another great video on some information that is simple, but very necessary in mathematics. So what I'd like to do in my channel is to clear up all the ill-formed concepts in mainstream mathematics, and possibly to reform the way mathematics is taught, because what you are taught in the mainstream is mathematics, not mathematics. Well. Until next time, stay safe and goodbye.